Alrighty guys, hopping right into it. Today we're going to be taking a look at Troublemakers. Now the Troublemakers in, in the new... Huh. I'm, I'm sorry guys, I, I feel like... I feel like I'm forgetting to do something. Uh... Oh god, today's the 19th! The new Modica Weiss set came out on the 15th. I was supposed to have a review up on the release day. Let's just get that off of here. Google image is a wallpaper really quick. Alrighty, perfect. Under 30 seconds? I don't even think I need to edit any of that out. Okay, I think we're good. <laughs> okay, so like I was saying before, um, today we're going to be taking a look at the new Modica set for Weiss Swords. Modica Rebellion, or Mado Rebel, as I've just decided it's going to be called forever, was the third and really the only Modica movie. It took Bushy Road well over a year to finally get this set to us, but it's out now. We've been seeing a lot of update sets lately. We have Sword Art 2, we have Miku 2, Fate Kaled 2, probably a whole bunch of other 2s that I'm forgetting to list off. And so far they've all been pretty decent, so let's take a look at what Madoka's got for us. As always, for those who don't know how this works, um, we're going to be taking a look at four cards from each color to stop this video from being ridiculously long. If this video gets enough feedback, then I will make a second part where I look at 16 more cards. You know, I've never actually done the whole like whore thing where I ask for a certain amount of likes on one of my videos, so let's go ahead and start that now. Um, if this video gets 50 likes, then I'll assume everybody wants a second part. It seems kind of high because of my other likes, but I like to give people goals to reach towards, you know? So with the fluff out of the way, let's take a look at our first color, yellow. We're going to start with one of the yellow level 3s, Nagisa Guided by the Circle. Now, Guided by the Circle is a name you're going to see a lot because I think most of the level 3s were named Guided by the Circle. Nagisa is a little more worth looking at than maybe Mommy because her effect does something very interesting that we don't see very often. It not only clears a space, but replaces that space with something else. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So, this is a level 3 that heals. It has a Climax combo. Uh, when you attack and Bringer of Memories is your Climax, then you can pay the cost, which is one. You can take one of your opponent's level three or lower characters, which is pretty much going to be every single character, in the front row, send it to memory, and then your opponent chooses up to one level zero from their waiting room and puts it in the slot that the card was previously in. At first I was looking at this and I was like, oh wow, that's that's so much worse than just getting rid of a character like a lot of other level 3s do. Like, we have Labrys, why would we ever need this card? But upon reflection, I actually think it's a little bit better that your opponent can put a level 0 in play. In fact, it's not so much that they can, it's that they have to. Some of you are still lost. Okay, um, at level 3, you're trying to deal enough damage to knock out your opponent, but at this point, if both players are playing correctly, you should have 8 Climaxes, and your deck should be thinned out, so Climax cancelling is a lot more common. Therefore, you want to be not adding as much soul damage as possible so that you deal exactly 7 damage. Normally, you want to use this kind of effect to clear space for one of your other characters that's maybe a little bit weaker to attack, but doing that adds one to that character's soul damage when they attack because it's a direct hit. With something like this, you're bringing in something that you're guaranteed to be able to knock out no matter what, but you can just crash into it, kill it, and not deal the one extra damage. This sounds small, but how many times have we dealt three or four damage, and it's that third or fourth card that ends up being the climax? God, don't even start, okay, it's happened to all of us. My one thing with this card is I almost wish it was one level 1 or lower, and the reason for that being if your opponent played a level 1, you could actually side attack with like a uh, 2 soul attacker and only deal 1 damage. So if your opponent was at like 6 or something, you could kind of just make it so that you only deal 1 and then you can try to go for game. I don't know, like it, it sounds a little stupid when I say it out loud, but I, I honestly kind of wish that it was something like that just so that we could manipulate it a little bit better. Next we're going to look at a uh, level 1, 1500 back. Some of you are out there going, oh my gosh, it's just a level 1 that gives 1500 in backup, why would you even look at this card? But the thing that makes this card special is, this is a backup with shift. I'm not really the biggest fan of cards with shift, but I think it's a really good idea on a free level 1, 1500 backup. Having this means not only can you clock it to draw two without, you know, feeling like you're losing your backup cards, but 
you can also take it as damage and then just immediately put them in your hand the next turn. There's just so many possibilities, like you take this thing in your clock at all for whatever reason and you've just gotten a 1500 back up to your hand. Hill in the Morning Sun is another card you're going to see from all the characters. Most of them aren't really worth looking at, I really think this is like the only one that I actually got, I could be wrong, let me look over my stuff really quick. Okay yeah, this is the only Hill in the Morning Sun card that I'm going to look at. Really, there's just one reason I want to look at this card, okay? First of all, it's a 3000 level 0, but it has an effect. So it has the same power as a vanilla, but you also get an effect. I know I knock on 3000 vanillas a lot, I take them out of all, all the trial decks and stuff, but honestly, 3000 power is not bad to have at level 0. The main reason I want to look at this card is <laughs> it's got probably one of the best level 0 effects I've ever seen. The character opposite to this cannot move to another slot. That can be used at any point in the game, making this a full game card. It's only got 3000 power, so your opponent can knock it out during their turn with pretty much anything after level 1, but I, I just think it's a really good effect to have to kind of mess with your opponent a little bit. Like, think of it this way. Think of it as, like, it's level 1, your opponent has, like, one of the 7000 level 1s or something, and you have like, I don't know, you're really bad and you play the 5500 vanillas. So you play this in front of the 7000 and you play the 5500 vanilla somewhere else and you attack with the 5500 vanilla, you side attack with this, and then during your opponent's next turn, your opponent can't move that 7000 over to defeat your 5500. If they didn't happen to have another level 1 in their hand that they can play, then like they just can't do anything about it. They've got to attack this, destroy it, and let that 5500 stay alive. Again, it doesn't sound like a huge game-changing effect, but little things like that add up. The last card we're going to be looking at is an event called New Encounter. This card is pretty much going to make Mono Yellow Mommy Nagisa decks a thing, which a lot of fans are going to be happy about. It's a level 3 and it costs 5 stock, but after you use it, all of your characters get plus 3000 power and the ability that if your damage is cancelled once per turn, you can deal 1 damage afterwards. Of course, in order to pull this effect off, you have to have 5 or more Nagisa and or Mami in play, so it's going to be exclusively just for theme decks. Some people aren't really going to like this card, they're going to say that you don't really get as much as you have to put into it and level 3 is too late to use it, but I actually think it's kind of a game winning card, I wouldn't run it at any less than 2 in any Mami Nagisa deck. Think of it this way, alright, so the laws of probability mean that if your damage is cancelled, dealing the one damage afterwards is not going to be a climax, because each climax represents about five cards in the deck, a little lower at level three, but it's normally like one for every three, so on and so forth, and if your damage is cancelled, then chances are the very next card is not going to be a climax, or if it is a climax, then that's even better because you're clearing out two climaxes with one attack instead of one. So if your damage is cancelled, that's like guaranteed one damage, and if you get the damage, that's great. If you don't get the damage, that's even better. There's no downside to having this effect up at all. And even if it never procs and all of your attacks just go through, well then you won the game anyway, like who cares, it's level 3, you're going to deal 7 damage with your attacks. I like this event, if you don't like it, that's fine. We're going to be getting onto green, I kind of wish I would just save green for the end because it's kind of like the main color, but no, we're going to go ahead and look at it now. The first card we're going to look at is Madoka Unchanged Smile. Um, this actually, to be honest, isn't that great of a card, but it serves a huge purpose in the Madoka set. It has a climax combo. Its climax combo is when you attack, you can discard one magic character from your hand and rest one of your standing magic characters and search your deck for two magic characters, reveal them, put them in your hand, and shuffle your deck. On a basic level, you're deck thinning your deck by two cards, making climax canceling a little bit easier, but moving away from that, this is great for change decks. If you're playing the game with a change target in your hand, then you can discard that change target, search your deck for the changer that turns into it, and then pull off your change combo. Just saying, it's got potential. Next we're going to look at Real Power Madoka. Um, it's probably the best level 1 in the set that I can see. I mean, if you can think of one better, that's, you know, you can just leave in the comment section below, I'll take a look at it, but I looked over the entire set and this was definitely my favorite. So Monica's effect, uh, when you attack you reveal the top card of your deck, and if it's a magic character this becomes a natural 8000 for the turn. Attacking with 8000 on level 1, that's pretty good. 
What's even better is if you pair this up with something like Yellow that has the new Nagisa that gives all of your characters plus 1000 power during your turn, which is really the only time you get this power boost anyway, um, then you can actually be swinging for 10,000 every single turn. There is that slight chance that you're not going to reveal a magic character, but since all of the characters in this set are magic characters, it's going to be really hard not to unless you go into like an event or a climax. To top all of that off, normally this would just be a pretty decent card because it'd be an assassin and your opponent would just destroy it during the next turn, but no, this has character discard on core. So even if your opponent does decide that they're tired of your crap and they want to take this card out, you just have to discard one character from your hand to keep it alive and it can just pull this crap off next turn. Um, this is going to make level 1 Modica decks a real thing. Normally, Modica decks focus on level 2s and 3 because um, they focus on change, but this doesn't need change to be good, okay? It's got Super Encore, and it attacks for 8,000. Okay, so the last normal card we look at before we just start getting ridiculous, okay? Honestly, this Hamiru is kind of bad, um, but it serves a purpose that really no, not very many characters that come out lately have. So when it comes into play, you can pay one stock and put the top card of your library into the clock. And then you can choose one card in your clock, put it in your hand, and clock another card off the top of your library. So why would I be looking at this card? Well, if you're fighting against somebody who is a total D-bag like me, they're going to do something to you called starving, where they leave you at exactly 5 damage so that you cannot um, level up. And this is something that I do in pretty much all of my matches, and it's kind of a tactic that a lot of other people have started adopting too. Um, and this kind of stops starving. Like, I don't know if this is something a lot of people have been dealing with lately or something, but it's totally what it does. You clock the top card of your library, and then you can select something, so like if you uh, taking something as damage that you really don't want to have taken, like if you see a level 1 you can play or something, then you can grab the level 1, you can clock yourself again, level up, and then start playing level 1s and steamroll your opponent. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's one of the most interesting, so we gotta look at it. Hey there, Monica Weiss players! Did you play an Ultimate Monica deck when the set first came out? You did! Well, have I got a surprise for you! Also, I can hear you through your speakers. So somebody at Bushy Road took a look at Ultimate Monica decks and they were like, well, well, this just isn't good enough! The deck just isn't winning enough! What's that? Like, 85% win rate? Well, we can get that up higher, can't we? So obviously I'm exaggerating a bit, Psychic Kyoko is still the most powerful deck in that format, but Ultimate Modica decks will never be the same. We're going to be looking at two cards instead of one here because I feel like it's necessary to look at both at the same time. So you're kind of getting like 17 cards out of this. So first I want to look at Ultimate Modica despite it being on the right. Um, for each of your other magic characters this gains plus 500 power, and when this is placed from hand to stage or via change, because we can change into it, you can draw one card and this gains 2000 power for the turn. Pretty good, pretty good, okay let's look at Homura becoming a devil. First, before I get into it, I just gotta say, like, the artwork on the Homura card is absolutely stunning. I think it looks really amazing. So, um, let's start off strong. If there's a marker under this card, it gains 8,500 power. <laughs> so, if you can get one marker under this card, it becomes a natural 18,500. So, to all the people who told me before that power doesn't really matter at level 3, um, I gotta tell ya, you can go ride a roller coaster because I think 18,500 power is amazing. In all seriousness, it's really not going to lose to like any other card in the format. If it's a two soul attacker that never dies, it's a card you never have to replace. You see how that works? But your opponent has to keep replacing their cards, so eventually your opponent is going to run out of resources before you. So, you might be asking yourself, Kudo, Kudo, how do I get this marker? Well, when this is placed from hand to the stage, you can choose one of your Madoka ultimates and put it face down under this as a marker. But Kudo, that's awful, then I lose one of my attackers. Well, if you do this, you can take one Madoka of the New World in your waiting room and put it in any slot on the stage. So if you can get out Madoka ultimate almost immediately, like I know you can, um, you can put this under it as a marker the very turn you play it, 
end, you get another character in its place that can also attack, and it's attacking for less soul damage, which is good at level 3. They tried to give this card a downside, and it ended up being a plus. But kudo, kudo, that's not ridiculous enough. Can you please tell me something more ridiculous about the card? Well, sure, anonymous viewer. If you pay two and discard one card from your hands to the discard pile, when the battle opponent of this becomes reversed, you can pay the cost. If so, put that character in the clock. But kudo, kudo, this is an 18,500. Isn't every character this battle going to be reversed? Yes. Yes, it will. Now, some people are going to be saying, oh, well, that's not that ridiculous. That just means you're getting, like, one extra damage each turn. But we can actually step that up a little bit higher. If your opponent is attacking with zeros and ones because they just want to finish off the game and they're just suiciding things into this, like, that's something we all do. At level three, if your opponent has level threes out and you have level zeros in your hand, you just suicide them off so that you can just win the game. Just deal the soul damage and win the game. What this does is your opponent cannot do that. Your opponent does not have that option. They cannot attack this at all. They can't side attack it because if they side attack it, they're not going to deal any damage. They can't frontal attack it because if they frontal attack it and they lose like they will, then that card, instead of just, oh, you know, send it to the waiting room, no, that card becomes damage to them and makes it easier for them to lose the game. It's so good it makes it so your opponent just cannot attack this card at all i can't even imagine how ridiculous it would be to have three of these in your front row even without powering all of them up with modica you just have ten thousands that you can use backups or whatever when your opponent attacks with that you can just immediately start dealing damage to them it's so crazy People tell me all the time that I over-exaggerate cards, and, you know, I very well might be, but I'm just really excited about this card. Um, Sayaka Kyoko decks are no longer the most powerful deck in the format, okay? Bushy Road, you win. Your ultimate Modica decks are the top. So one other thing that I want to point out, because I know somebody's going to ask me, is, well, Kudo, can you use the ultimate Modica from the first set? And the answer is yes. Kudo, can you use four cards of both Modicas. No, you can't. The cool thing is they both have literally the exact same name. They're both Modica Ultimate and they both work for this attack. Um, and I would actually recommend using the other Modica a little bit more. Here's the reason. So if you're playing this on level 3, um, which you're going to be most of the time because it's a game finisher, uh, you're going to be wanting a Modica that actually does something when it hits the board. When this hits the board, you get to draw a card, and I guess that's kind of cute because it works with Homer becoming a Devil's Effect, but the other one heals your clock, and I think that's a little more important because like, healing your clock is probably one of the best effects in the game. So, personally, I would rather run the other Ultimate Modica and start healing my clock than getting the card draw. In fact, the great thing is, um, getting the heal is even more plus almost a little bit, because if your opponent doesn't capitalize on that, you can actually clock a card to draw two, which is normally really stupid, but like if your opponent's not capitalizing on it, then you know you get to heal the card, so it's not like you're really losing anything. The last thing I want to talk about this card, and the, um, the real cherry on the cake, is there is a combo that lets you pull all of this off at level 2. So you can start doing this at level 2. You can have an 18,500 that sends all opponents to the clock at level 2. It's really hard to pull off and it's really costly, but just the fact that it's possible makes me lull. I can't talk about this anymore, okay? I've been talking about this for like 5 minutes, we gotta move on. So anybody who's talked to me about the Monica Weiss set knows that I personally believe that Saika Kyoko was the best deck in the format because you could run this really nice Howling Kyoko card at level 2 that was invincible, pretty much. It attacked at 11,500, and it had Super Encore, and it was really annoying and really easy to pull off, and I really liked it. So for those of you wondering, yes, the Kyoko Saika deck did get a small buff in the new set. It didn't get a uh, Becoming a Devil Homer a buff, but it did get a minor buff nonetheless. One of the things I didn't really like about the Saika Kyoko deck is its level 1 play was a little inconsistent. Like, you could run things like Rookie Magical Girl and stuff to make it a little bit easier, but overall, the level 1 play for the deck was kind of weak. Um, it's still not that powerful, but we did get a lot better tools like this. It's a level 1 Suicider that's free. 
and I think that's pretty darn good. Especially because its other effect is after you suicide with it, you can give another one of your magic characters plus 1500 power. The level 3 Kyoko isn't too shabby either. Um, the level 3 Kyoko from the last set was probably the best between Kyoko and Sayaka to use, but this level 3 is actually a little bit better in my opinion. So when this is placed from hand to the stage, you can put the top guard of your clock in the waiting room. It's a healer, which already makes it really good. Uh, you can also pay two stock and discard a card from your hand when this attacks, and you can just deal one extra damage to your opponent, which I love these effects, you guys know I do. Pretty much any way to deal damage outside of just normal attacks is always really good. Um, the main reason that I love attacks like this, and I'll use this card as an example, is when you attack, you can deal the one damage before the attack even goes through. First of all, at level 3, every single damage matters. So if your opponent has like 6 life left and you do this attack, then you can pretty much just GG them immediately before the attack even goes through and you don't even have to worry about being cancelled. If the damage ends up being a climax, then you might think of it as a minus because, you know, you just paid two and discarded a card from your hands to hit a climax, but it's actually even better if you hit a climax because if you hadn't done that, your attack would have just been canceled. But now that that climax is out of the way, statistically, your attack should go through just fine and you'll deal even more damage. It's not going to give you crazy hand advantage like the other one did. In fact, this is actually going to make you minus your hand a whole lot and waste out a lot of your stock. But it wins games. Would you rather have a big hand or win games? I mean, the choice is really up to you, but I'm kind of leaning towards the left, you know? That was kind of a stupid thing to say. I held out my right hand when I said the first one and my left hand when I said the second one. And even though I could see me leaning towards my left hand, nobody else could. Moving on. Our next Hyoko is a level 2 backup. Oh, holy cow, I'm looking at another backup. Whoa, this is wacky! So, it's a level 2 backup that doesn't actually give 3,000 backup, it only gives 2,500, so you might be wondering why I'm looking at it. Well, it's got this neat little first effect, where you can pay 2 and put a character from your stage to the waiting room when you use this card's backup, and if you do, you can choose one of your opponent's characters whose level is higher than your opponent's level and put it in the waiting room. Uh, this is a really good anti Modica card that comes from the Modica set, because this is pretty much a card specifically for killing change decks. If your opponent is using something really ridiculous, like, um, I don't know, uh, Homer of Becoming a Devil or something like that, then they play it on level 2 and just have a level 3 chilling at level 2. This immediately puts it in the waiting room so that you don't have to deal with it. The one thing I don't really like about this card, like a lot of people are going to point out the fact that you have to put a character into the waiting room and you also have to get rid of two stock. Um, that stuff kind of bothers me, but the thing that actually really bothers me about this card is the fact that it goes to the waiting room instead of being put maybe on the bottom of the deck or in the memory or even in the hand. Because a lot of Modica changers actually change from the waiting room. So if your opponent has the changer in their hand, they can actually rechange into that card. So, this isn't really that great of a card, but I wanted to look at it because it's an anti-meta card for the set that you might want to look at if Modica cards are getting you down. It also beats out a lot of Persona decks, I mean, I'm just saying. Lastly, we're going to look at the Red Event World Rewritten. This is a really simple card, it's a level 1 card, though you probably won't be playing it on level 1 a whole lot, and all players return all cards in their waiting room to their respective libraries and shuffle those libraries. So, a couple things. First of all, um, I really like cards that shuffle your opponent's discard pile back into their deck, or even yours for that matter, because if you're hitting a lot of um, non-climax cancels, like if all of your attacks are going through and stuff, and you know that the climaxes are coming, or if your opponent attacked with some characters and they actually got a whole bunch of climaxes to put into their stock, you can completely screw them. You force your opponent to deck refresh, they don't take the one damage, mind you, but you force your opponent to deck refresh, and it takes even longer to get those climaxes back into the deck. It pretty much rewards your opponent's bad luck, your opponent's mistakes, or just straight up your good luck. It's overall a really cool card to have, and I love the fact that it's free. It can also help you out, because if you are climax cancelling a lot, and you know a lot of your opponent's attacks are going to go through, you can just reset everybody's decks, 
and all of a sudden you've got all your climaxes back. And if you've been attacking, drawing cards and stuff, you're probably going to have a little more leeway because if all eight of your climaxes are going back in the deck and you have a bunch of cards in your stock, field, and hand, then it's going to be even harder for your opponent to deal damage so you can play around it. The other thing I want to look at is the fact that this is another anti Monica deck card because if you notice your opponent is setting up some kind of change like um, the level 2 Kyoko is a really popular one, if your opponent is setting up some kind of change then you can get rid of their change targets, okay? The change is gone, Bye bye good luck getting that back into the waiting room. Now you just look foolish. So I really like this because it's an anti modica card. Again, um, red is going to be all about countering itself. Okay, so getting onto the last color, blue, um, we're going to start by looking at Goodbye to Bad Dreams. If you happen to be using the Kyoko Repelling the Nightmare, which is the two counter that I looked at before, um, this is kind of a neat card to run because not only does it bond into it, but it's got this really neat little effect where if your opponent uses a Brainstorm effect and they get at least one Climax, then you can draw a card for every Climax that they get. So it's kind of like your opponent pays for the Brainstorm and you get some Brainstorm effects because the normal blue Brainstorm effect is draw one card for each Climax you reveal. And this just lets you have it for free if your opponent is Brainstorming. I just think that's a really cool idea. We're going to be looking at the level 3 Saika. This is another Guided by the Circle card. I said before you're going to be seeing it again, and here it is. If there are 6 or more Climaxes in your waiting room, then this gets minus 1 level in your hand, so you can actually play it on level 2, which is great. Its second effect, though, is what I really want to look at. So at the start of your opponent's draw phase, if this is in the front row, you can choose one of your characters, including this one if you really want to, and that character gets plus 4,000 power for the turn. Wow, what a way to mess with your opponent. So this has a few applications. First of all, if you have this in the front row and you really just want to give this a power up, then you totally can. It's a 13,500, not a lot of things are going to be stepping over this without a lot of back row help. And that's good. Your opponent has to either crash something into it or side attack through it, which probably isn't going to happen because it's level 3. But whatever, it's a good effect because it means the character is guaranteed to stay alive for next turn and you can attack with it again, but everybody knows power doesn't matter level 3. <laughs> you can also use it to power up another character, so if you happen to have like a deck with, um, I don't know, 8000s or 8500s or some other bullcrap at level 2 that you don't normally run, then you can power those up, and those all of a sudden become a decent enough power that your opponent can't step over them. So if you see a character that has a decent effect, but you know they have really low power, you can give them enough power to stay alive so you can continuously use their effects, which is good. Also, if you happen to have three of these in the front row, um, keep in mind that's 12,000 power that you can dish out somewhere, so if you really wanted to, like, you could just give one of these like 12,000 power and have it be more powerful than becoming a devil. It, it's probably never going to happen, because your opponent can easily just move it to another space and attack something else, but I'm just letting you know the possibilities, okay? We're just here to talk about the possibilities. Its final attack is a Climax combo. If Saika's true form is in the Climax zone, you can pay the cost, which is one, and you can search your deck for up to two magic characters and put them in your hand. This is a huge boost, just huge, huge to the Saika Kyoko deck, because Kyoko makes you discard a card every time you use its effect. Um, having one Saika and one Kyoko on the board is now going to be very crucial. Because if you pull off the Climax combo, then you attack with Saika first, you fill up your hand with two cards, and then you get rid of one of those cards for Kyoko's effect. It's adorable, and also pretty competitive. Next, we're going to be looking at a back row character. Um, all characters in front of this gain X power, X times the level of that character, we've seen that before. But its effect is you can pay two and rest this to search your deck for a magic character and put it in your hand. Holy cow, the possibilities are endless. Uh, two stock is kind of a lot. It's not something you're going to want to be doing every turn. But on the other hand, this is something you can do every turn. This is potentially an extra character every single turn, and it's a character of your choosing anything you want. It's this really nice grab bag where you can pay the two, and if you happen to get rid of, like, a change target or something, you can search your deck for a changer that turns into that, put it in your hand, and then play it. Um, this is going to be a very, very powerful card for people who still want to run the Dead-Eyed Sayaka build that I had on my channel. I know I keep saying this, but it seems like a really small thing, but it adds up over time, because if you use this effect, let's say, like, three times in a match, 
then that's three extra pluses that you just got, and they were cards that you have to search for, or tutor for, if you're a Magic player. Okay, are you guys ready to look at the best card in the set? So, <laughs> I can't even believe it. Cube going Q. It's a level zero, 2,000 power, and its first effect is you can have as many uh, copies of this card in your deck as you want. Okay, so um, I'm going to give you an entire deck profile right here, right now, right at the end of this set review. Are you ready for this? Okay, so first you start with 42 cube A going Qs, alright? You're going to want those for your deck, not any less, alright? You're going to be thinking, oh, well maybe I should throw in some more. No, you're just going to want 42 cube A going Qs. They're going to be pretty cheap. Go get them right now. So let's look at its second effect. You can pay two and you can just discard a card from your hand, which is probably going to be a cube going Q. Uh, when this becomes reversed, you pay that cost, and if so, you can choose up to two cube going Q from your waiting room and then put them rested in separate slots on the stage. You can choose one of your characters, and that character gains plus 2,000 power for the turn. So we see a lot of level 1 decks, we see a lot of level 2 decks, we see a few level 3 decks. This is probably one of the first times I would say that this is a level 0 deck where you gain immediate advantage on level 0. Uh, you're never going to run out of these things. They're, they're immortal and you're always going to have a row of 5. Always. Like, they don't even give any kind of assist, but you're going to do it. Okay, so if you're, for your climaxes, right, I said this is going to be deck profile. You're going to want 42 of these, and then for your climaxes, you're going to want an 8 plus 2 soul climax. It doesn't matter what they are. Um, it would be preferable if they had some kind of decent trigger effect, but if not, it's whatever, who cares? Um, you're just going to want 8 plus 2 soul climaxes. Make it happen. The deck that I have just given you is can potentially win games, and that's not even a joke. Sometimes I just gotta love this game, okay? This is one of the greatest card games in the world, where you can do something like that and still have a shot at winning. In all seriousness, if you wanted to take this another step forward and you wanted it to be an actual competitive deck, you could cut it down to like 25 cubes and put in some actual like assists and backups and other stuff, but you're completely killing the fun of the deck, okay? Just run the deck as a fun, trollsy deck and be happy with it. Don't try to make it super competitive. It's not going to work. You want some Ultimate Modica stuff for that. And bonus card. You're actually going to be getting like 18 cards out of this because they released a bonus that I want to look at. Homer, a hope and resignation. God, Homer, you have like the worst card names ever. It's sort of like a worse version of Becoming a Devil. Well, not necessarily worse. It has less setup, so it's easier to play, but it's weaker. During the very first turn you play this card, you can pay one to give it the effect where if you reverse a character, it goes to the clock. Um, it's not going to have the insane 18,500 body, but 10,000 still a pretty big booty. And your opponent's probably going to have a level 2 still, like, out on the field chilling somewhere. It only costs 1, which is better than becoming a devil, but it only happens once, which is worse than becoming a devil. So it can still finish games just as well as becoming a devil at a lower cost, which is cool, but it just doesn't get its effect as often, which is worse. I don't even know. I still think becoming a devil is way better. So its second effect kind of makes up for it, and you can rest a magic character to give this plus 1500 for the turn. So potentially, if you're resting both of your back row, this is like a 13,000, which is kind of cute, I guess. And you can step over a lot of stuff, and like you can use its first effect fine, but after that first turn, it's really just a powerhouse that's only powerful during your turn. So, I don't know, take from it what you will, but I still think Becoming a Devil is better. But this is a promo, so here you go. So, Kudo, what do you think of the new set? Um, it's good. It's okay. I mean, it's, it's pretty decent. Some people are going to be surprised that I'm saying that, because I said a lot of really good things about a lot of the cards in the set. Um, it's it's not so much that the cards in the set are bad or disappointing or anything, but I just I, didn't, I don't know if it has the same impact as some of the other sets had. This set, I mean, like, it made Ultimate Modica deck a lot more powerful, it made it the most powerful deck in the set, so... Like, that, I, that was the intention from the beginning. I guess it's pretty cool that it got that back. Um, Psychic Kyoko players have some stuff to look forward to. They're going to be they're gonna be changing out, like, seven or eight cards in their deck. Um, it did a little bit for yellow because now if you are somebody who's running, like, pure mommy decks or something, you can rock Nagisa too, and Nagisa has a lot of effects that it brings to the table. Um, it's got that really nice shift clock thing that's really cool. 
and it also has that event that can finish games at level 5, so, you know, that's that's a pretty cool thing for it to have, I guess. I guess my main thing comes from the fact that the Modica set was already such a powerful set to begin with, and this didn't really add too much to, like, deck variety or anything like that. Like, okay, let me give you an example. So, the Project Diva F Second set, when it came out, it was huge. It doubled, almost tripled the power of the Vocaloid decks. It came out the gate with so many new decks, just so many new possibilities. It was almost overwhelming. It was probably one of the best second sets we've gotten. Um, Sword Art 2, like, it, it took the decks away from just being level 1 Encore Abuse decks and actually kind of, like, made some variety and brought out a lot of better late game stuff. And, like, you had to kind of sacrifice some of the early game power to get some of the better late game power, but it, it felt like you were running something really different and new. With this set, I... It's a really good set, but really we're just going to be playing the same decks we were playing before with better cards. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's pretty cool for Modica players, and I really hope Modica players get a lot of enjoyment out of this. You're going to be able to compete with a lot more decks that you weren't able to before. Just uh, don't expect to be playing any new decks, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. Those things really do help us out. Leave me your thoughts on the set in the comments section below. And finally, subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Kudo news. Remember guys, if you want to see a part 2 to this where I look at even more cards, you have to leave it likes. If I see 50 likes, I will immediately start working on a part 2 to this. If not, I'll assume everybody's just okay with this, and we're good. I mean, this video is almost 40 minutes. You're probably pretty satisfied with just this, and I'm completely okay with that. Until next time, Weiss fans, uh, congratulations on the new set, Monica fans.